six, or no marginal notes at all to be affixed, but only for the explanation of the Hebrew and the Greek words, which cannot without some cir circumlocution. Wow, wow. Words of that's a fifth grader. Yeah, that's a fifth grader. So you have to look up these words. I do. But uh, so briefly and fitly be expressed in the text. They were just wanted to be very careful. You know, don't change too much. Don't add, don't subtract. Don't change unless necessary. And remember, oh, the Bible we're using is a 1769. It's not an addition. It is not a new translation. Right. It just grammatically changed and spelling changes. But just because it kept up with the language of the day. Okay, such quotations of places to be marginally set down as shall serve for the fit reference of one scripture to another. It's not a reference column. We want you to know where, the, the, if they're quoting a scripture in the Old Testament, we want you to know where they're getting it. And this treasury scripture knowledge is a great tool, a great book. So you, it'll show you where each one of these quotations were in the Old Testament. And Paul used the Old Testament to prove what he said in the New Testament. Right. Even the mystery age mm -hmm. that was hidden. Yeah. But Paul quoted the Old Testament <clears throat> to prove the New Testament. Yes, sir. You take the Old Testament out of the New Testament and you have eliminated almost 70% of the New Testament. The New Testament's foundation is the Old Testament. Right, right. right. And so, right. so people go, we're not under the Old Testament. Well, if it's in the Old Testament and it's repeated in the New Testament, it's for us today. Yeah, yeah it's for us. Yeah. Right. So every particular man of each company to take the same chapter or chapters and have it translated or amended, amended them severally by himself where he thinketh good, all to meet together, confer what they have done, and agree for their parts what shall stand. So the 14 of each little group would get together, each would translate it on their own, they'd come and compare notes, and then they'd make adjustments according to uh, the consensus of the group, which one was correct. As any one company hath dispatched any one book in this manner, they shall send it to the rest to be considered as seriously and judiciously, for his majesty is very careful in this form. Hmm. It, it was not just six different translators that put the whole Bible together. Yeah. It's 54. Yeah. Right. And they all compared to each other. Wow. Don't, don't, you won't find that in the new versions. No. Right. If any uh, company, upon the review of a book so set, doubt or differ upon any place, to send them word thereof, note the place, and before send the reasons to which, if they consent not, the difference to be confounded at the general meeting, which is to be of the chief persons of each company at the end of the work. They're going to the the most brilliant minds at the end are going to make some decisions, and we're, when we get to the, these guys, these translators. It was um, at Dallas Theological Seminary, one of their, their exposition of the Greek language, he said, we don't have anybody here that could even proofread for the King James Bible. They weren't, they weren't that well developed in it. Okay. Um, and it's a new medication I'm on, that's why I can't remember names. I'm remembering facts. But I've been struggling with names because of this Isosor guy. So that's my loser's limp. That's my excuse. Usually I know these guys. I, I, these names come to me. Uh, when, any, when any place of special obscurity is doubted of, let us be directed by authority to send to any learned man in the land for his judgment of such a place. If the translators could, he said, we're going to send that to another man who's not able to contend this week. We're going to send that to him and let him look it over and give us his ideas on that. So letters to be sent from every bishop to the rest of the clergy, admonishing them of this translation in hand and to move and charge as many skillful in the tongues 
and having taken pains in that county to send his particular observations to the company, whether either at Westminster, Cambridge, or Oxford. These are the three major mm -hmm. seminaries. Yeah. And the directors of each company to be the deans of Westminster uh, and Chester for that place, and the king's professors in the Hebrew degree in either of these universities. These translations will be used when they agree better with the text than the Bishop's Bible, Tendon's Bible, Matthew's Bible, Curtis Bible, Witcher's Bible, or the Geneva Bible. So they, they weren't trying to change those Bibles. They were using them to verify each thing. Because those were the Word of God too. Amen. Besides the said directors before mentioned, three or four of the most ancient and <coughs> divines in either of the universities not employed in translating to be assigned by the vice chancellor upon conference with the rest of the heads, the overseers of the translations as well, Hebrew as Greek, for the better observation of the fourth rule above specified. To make one Bible, this is the goal. Truly good Christian reader, we never thought from the beginning that we should need to make a new translation it's not a new translation. Wow. Nor yet to make of a bad one a good one. There was nothing wrong with the other ones. But to make a good one better, or out of many good ones, one principal good one, not justly to be accepted against, that hath been our endeavor. That nobody can justly attack the King James Bible. I hear people say, well, that should have been translated this. Yeah. No, it could have been. Yeah. There's yeah. heaven and hell difference between saying should have right. or could have. Right. 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 Okay. We are so far off from condemning any of the labors that travail before us of this kind, either in this land or beyond the sea, either in King Henry's time or King Edward's or Queen Elizabeth's or every renowned memory. Uh, that we acknowledge them to have been raised up of God for the building and furnishing of his church and that they deserve to be had of us and of posterity in everlasting remembrance. They're praising all those guys that made all those other Bibles. Yeah. Neither did we think much to consult the translators or commentators, Chaldee, Hebrew, Syrian, Greek, or Latin, nor, no, nor the Spanish, French, Italian, or Dutch. We, didn't, we, we used it all. We used the Dutch Bible, the German Bible. <coughs> we, we used the, the, the Latin Bible, the Greek Bible, the, Syri the Syriac, the Bashidi text. We used all of it. The King James Bible people saw all of these things that everybody says nobody used them. They saw the Vaticanus. They saw the Sinaiticus. They refused to use it. They saw P66. They said, that's not, it's a corrupt. They're corrupt. <laughs> they saw that. They, 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 this stuff that comes out now. Well, they didn't have it back then. They saw it. Yeah. You can read Tischendorf's writings and you can see that they knew it. Neither did we hesitate. But having and using as great helps as were needful and fearing no reproach for slowness. Hmm. We're gonna we're gonna do it right. Yeah. They didn't publish, they didn't print it or uh, translate it, organize it, and print it in three years. Right. It was a long, arduous process. Mm -hmm. uh, we have at the length, through the good hand of the Lord upon us, brought the work to pass that you see. Wow. That's what their message was to King James and to the common ear. Miles Smith, there were many chosen that were greater in other men's eyes than in their own, and that sought the truth rather than their own praise. These men were legends in their day. Dr. John Reynolds represented the Puritans the, and the dissenters. He was a dissenter, but he, he didn't, wasn't ostracized from the, from the Puritan church. With a near photographic memory. Dr. Thomas Holland, European scholarship in opposition to Rome. He was a, he was a translator, but yet he, he came on board because he was so skillful. Uh, Dr. Miles Smith, Great. This was one of the main guys. Fluent in Hebrew, Chaldee, Syriac, Arabic, as fluent in those languages as in English. Wow. How, how many people do we have in America today that could do that? 
How many at Dallas? No. Talbot. None. Dr. George Abbott, Puritan in church, anti-folk. Sir Henry Saville, Master of Mathematics, Astronomy, and translated eight volumes of Chrysostom. I've read three of those volumes. It's a masterpiece. Hmm. Uh, wh what a translation that is. Uh, uh, let's see. Master of Mathematics. He checked all these so-called contradictions of numbers in, in the Bible. Hmm. The difference between the King James Bible and the modern Bible is that the, the people that did publish these new ones, they changed the numbers so they they looked they were alike. Right. Jehoiakim was chosen. He was eight years old and began to reign and reign three months in Jerusalem. The king said that. Chronicle said yeah. he was 18 years old when he began to reign. They were honest translators. They translated exactly what there was there. And both are absolutely correct. He became co-regent right, right. with his father yeah. for eight years. He reigned uh, when he was eight, no, 18 right. years old. Same. Eight years old, his father got leprosy and got out. And then he reigned the rest of those times. So they're both correct. Right. It's like he was, one king reigned four years, but another one said he reigned 42 years. Well, it wasn't him that reigned, it was his mother who ran the show. And they were looking at the perpetuity of those the kingdom, not necessarily the age of the king itself. So every issue, the problem is up here. Yeah. And they were honest. As we get to the italicized words, the King James translators were honest and italicized the word. You don't find italicized words in the modern versions. Sure. Right. True. They, <laughs> they, they insert it. Yeah. They just say what's got to be. Uh, Edward Lively, master of the Oriental languages. Mm -hmm. Lancelot Andrews, uh, a man of prayer, piety, and master of Greek, Latin, Hebrew, Chaldean, Syriac, Arabic, and 15 other languages. Some people are gifted that way. Mm -hmm. oh. I know how to say I need to go to the restroom in seven languages. Because <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> but you need to read on the life of Lancelot Andrews. Mm. The Holy Bible, co containing the Old Testament and the New, newly translated out of the original tongues and with former translations diligently compared and provided by His Majesty's special commandment, appointed to be read in churches and printed at London by Robert Barker, printer of the King's Most Excellent Majesty out of Dominique 1611. Barker's publishing house. The New Testament and of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, newly translated out of the original Greek, and with the former translations diligently compared and revised by his majesty's special commandment, and printed in London by Robert Barker, printed to the king's most excellent majesties and of and of Dominic Sixteen Privilegio. Now it's just those are two statements almost identical, but they were written by two great men in introducing the King James Bible. It was commanded to be made. It was commanded to be used in the churches of England. That's where people get the authorization. Mm. So it's the authorized version. But who can authorize the word of God? God. God did. James never said, right. this is my Bible. Right. It's the Holy Bible. Amen. It was always the Holy Bible for 400 years. Mm -hmm. And now it's got to be King James Bible. But everybody used it. As we said through history. Of especially the Protestants. Uh, the dedicate, dedicatory epistle to King James, which also enhanced the completed work, recalled the king's desire that there should be one more exact translation of Holy Scriptures into the English tongue. The translator expressed that they were poor instruments to make God's holy truth to be yet more and more known, while at the same time recognizing that popish persons sought to keep the people in ignorance and darkness. Wow. We want the people of England and the colonies around the world to have their own copy Amen. of the Word of God and know what thus saith the Lord without it being filtered 
to the bishops or the popes mm -hmm. or the preachers. Yep. The received text. Uh, we don't use, that's, you know, it's not the completed Bible. It's the historical text. It's the martyr's text. It's the church's text all through the years. It's the, it's the text that's been used by true churches all through history. Traditional Byzantine majority Latin historic ecclesiastical manuscripts. John Bergon's Notes of Truth. Here's what he said. Being John Bergon. He said, he's witnesses to its ancient <coughs> authenticity authenticity, primitiveness, agreement of ancient witnesses. This is why he said this Bible is the right one. Because it witnesses to its ancient authenticity. It's primitive. You can find texts 250 AD that agree with it. Mm -hmm. But you find three that are written 250 AD to 350 AD that disagree with each other more times than they disagree with the historical text. P66 and Sinaiticus and Vaticanus do not agree with each other. That's right. Uh, agreement of ancient witnesses, number, variety of evidence, the sources, respectability of sources, the weight, the unbroken tradition, the continuity. That's what I was just saying. That all through history, the continuity, and all through the, these English Bibles, the, the, con, the continuity of it, the biblical agreement, the context. What does the actual context say? Then the internal considerations, the reasonableness. The reasonableness. So English Bibles based on the text which Septus began with Tyndall, who was burned alive in 1536 and is called the father of the English Bible. The Coverdale Bible was printed in 1535. Then the Matthews Bible in 1537. Its editor, John Rogers, was burned by Bloody Mary. The Great Bible was released in 1539 and the Taverners Bible in 1539 and the Geneva New Testament in 1557. The Bishop's Bible in 1568 was printed. All of these were from the same historical received text and there were many other editions during this period of time. But these were the major ones that were published, official publications of the, of the, king, of the kings of England and queens of England. Thousands died to get us our old Bible text. Erasmus and his, his students were killed. Ecclesiastical text. This text endorses the biblical churches of the ages. The true Bible churches have historically used this text through the ages. But all of a sudden, in the late 1800s, when all the cults were established, now people know better than 360 years that this Bible was used in England. But we know this. They acknowledge the best Bible defenders. Of course, we know the defenders pro King James. This is what we would say. The Orthodox version trips all previous versions of the Bible. The Geneva Bible was the last printed in 1644, but the notes continue to be published with the King James text. Subsequent versions of the Bible were likewise eclipsed, for the authorized version was the Bible until the advent of the Revised Version and ensuing modern translation. It is still accepted as such by its defenders, Lawrence and Vance. And he's wrote several books, but the major book that he wrote was uh, The Other Side of Calvinism. Mm -hmm. It's a good book. Mm -hmm. I have many friends that are Calvinists. I have many friends that are Armenian. I'm a Bible believer. Mm -hmm. Hey! Uh, yeah. Sometimes that side's right, sometimes this side's right. But Baptists are neither. Mm -hmm. right. We're Biblicists. That's right. right. Amen. Okay. It's still accepted. Another, but it's also called the Best Buy, it's detractors. From the middle of the 17th century, the King James Bible has been acknowledged the Bible of the English-speaking nations throughout the world simply because it is the best. A revision which embodied the ripe fruits of nearly a century of labor and appealed to the religious instinct of a great Christian people, gained by its own internal character, a vital authority which could never have been secured by any edict of sovereign rulers. 
West, West God. That's what. And that's why he had to make a new Bible. Because he hated the King James Bible, even though he said that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and his own son wrote what his dad, his dad hated the King James Bible. We've got to find a way to change it. Because he didn't believe in miracles. He practiced a lot of stuff that a lot of the people that are putting the movies out today, like the children's suit. Right. Yeah. He practiced uh, necromancy. Trying to communicate with the dead. Yeah. Did a lot of things. Where will you find these phrases? You find them all through English culture. That's right. But you don't find them in the Bible, so it didn't bring them today. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last one. I, I don't want to give that up. No. That's the reason I keep the King James Bible. The truth shall make you free. Let not your heart be troubled. Nothing but skin and bones, Job said. The salt of the earth, an eye for an eye. A thorn in the flesh. Signs of the times, our daily bread, wolf in sheep's clothing, the powers that be, ordained of God. At their wit's end, pearls before swine. Blind lead the blind. A drop in the bucket. The nations are but a drop in the bucket. Yeah. They don't mean nothing to God. I don't care what's going on in Russia or China. Uh, anybody that says we cannot have revival today, I think that's borderline blasphemy. Right. Yeah. Amen. Because yeah. he who now let us will it until he be taken out of the way, and he is the Holy Spirit. And where does he live? In the church. If we're sold and light and we preach the word of God, we can have revival. Amen. That's right. Amen. Okay. Or I just will stop being an evangelist. That's right. Yeah. A blind lead the blind, a drop in the bucket. Oh, ye of little faith, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. At least beef in eight English. Oh, we need to get a redo that stuff. Have you read what people do in their text messages today? Yeah. I mean, how do you translate some of that stuff? <laughs> I mean, are you two? Okay. <laughs> Somebody just texted me that today and said, am I too long? <laughs> Ancient and archaic languages like Hebrew and Greek are anchored by the usage and definitions of their day and cannot be altered without obvious violation. Elizabethan English, Shakespearean English is locked. We don't use it today except for scripture. Sure. It's anchored. Koine Greek is not used today. It's locked. It's anchored. Right. You have to, it has to stay with the meaning of that day, not the meaning of our day. Or we, right. I have a problem using yay, but it's in our Bible. Mm. Right. right. That's a satanic attack on yeah. the Bible. Amen. Amen. Okay. Other words like that. Our old English of Spencer, Shakespeare, or and scripture is anchored also to the day of its translating. Gay can only mean what that day of translating meant, not today's corrupting. Use the lexicons and dictionaries giving usage of that day, like just like the unicorn. Yeah. They all, all through history of the English language, unicorn meant a single horned rhinoceros. Right. Webster's 1828 dictionary said it very clearly. There's a one with two horns. And the one that in, in Asia Minor was one horn. Mm -hmm. It's not a horse. Of course. Of course. You know Mr. Ed? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were old enough to know Mr. Ed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Archaic or ancient. The foundations of many generations. This Bible is to speak to the foundation. Isaiah 58, 12. And they that and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. That was the goal of the King James translators. We want to repair the breach between the common man and the word of God. We want to make sure that everybody can get that. 
Proverbs 22, 28, remove not the ancient landmarks, which the, my fathers have said. It's worked for 400 years plus. Yeah. Without exception. Right. Nobody, you don't have an argument against it. Right. Right. You can pick it, you can be too cotton picking, cotton picking. <laughs> right. And Hilkiah, the high priest, said unto Shaphan the scribes, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. <laughs> they found the old, the ancient one, mm -hmm. in the house of God. Not, not what they were, people were saying. <laughs> and by then they were still, they were even adding to the scripture that the Jews were uh, after the captivity. They were adding to it, and they added traditions, right. and that developed into the the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Herodians, uh, they all added their little taste and flavor and explanation of the Bible. No, but we have a text that doesn't change. Mm -hmm. uh, go ye, inquire the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against him, because my fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book. The prophet thought that the Bible was the word of God. Mm -hmm. And what did they have? Did anybody have an original? Mm -mm. No, it's, it disappears with Jeremiah. Probably hidden somewhere under where the cross of Calvary was. Jesus hung on there, the blood fell, flowed down, flowed down through the cracks under Jeremiah's tunnels, and some of those tunnels under the, where the road, old rugged cross stood, and it probably drifted on that Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. Read many of these explorers that have found these things. <coughs> Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and Jerusalem did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. Ooh. Sounds like the same kind of work that's being done today. Who's, who's writing all these stuff? Things. Read, read the unspiritual background of Westcott and Hoard. Mm -hmm. And all of them. And many of these, these guys have got involved. They wouldn't have, you wouldn't accept them as members of your church. Right. Mm -hmm. But did. Mm -hmm. Manasseh reigned 55 years and destroyed Bibles, corrupted the temple. Uh, in Josiah's 18 year the high priest found the Bible which had been hid and protected it for 73 years the original copy that's what they found mm -hmm. was Manasseh Hezekiah's boy mm -hmm. so turned against God that he was burning the Bibles <coughs> foundations of many generations. Job 12, 12. With the ancient is wisdom in the length of days, understanding old preachers and commentators <clears throat> of 2,000 years teach from the TR based scriptures. And now they're done. Mm -hmm. Now you, they, they want you to follow the modern teachings. Mm -hmm. How can you follow somebody that didn't believe in miracles, didn't believe in the virgin birth, didn't believe... Jesus Christ was God the Son. How can you use their Bible? Mm -hmm. And yet that's, what, that's where these Bibles came from. Right. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy had said, had said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours of possession. The enemy is taking away, stealing our possessions and defiling our good things. I'm just setting up this thought in your mind. How, what does Satan do? What's its primary attack against the Word of God, the prophets of God? They steal. They even come in not but for to kill, to steal, and destroy. And how does he do? He steals words out of the Bible. Yeah. I'm just saying. We're going to find that all through the Old Testament and all through the New Testament. We won't have time to see them all. Uh, Ezekiel said, Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy has said against you, aha, okay, 
and defiling your good things. Jeremiah 6, 6, thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? Walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. They will not walk in accordance to this old Bible because they hate fundamentalists. They hate church and conservative Christianity. They said, give us another Bible. I've had men in my church say, tell me that. The same principle, Constitution. Are our, our founding fathers better grounded and intelligent than today? I think so. Yeah. Uh, so it needs not to be rewritten. Right. We don't need to adjust that Constitution as much as they're trying to do that. Right. And that's just, and it's based on Bible principles. Nothing contradictory in the original Constitution and the Bible. Right, right. <clears throat> but by that same principle, Shakespeare, Milton, Spencer, Bunyan used archaic English. But the colleges <clears throat> make you read British literature. Yeah. Yeah. The way it was written. Yeah. yeah. And Shakespeare. Yeah. Hark! Tis the east and Juliet is the sun. Hey! There she is! I like Shakespeare. Yeah. yeah. Not him personally, I like. But he used his Bible all through his writings. Yeah. And they were all matching the King James Bible. Huh. Uh, and so it was Spencer and the great poets, the great British poets. I've taught British literature for seven years in college. So I'm just saying, all these writers, they used the King James as their basis. Benjamin Franklin. He read his Bible. He was a Bible man and a church man, even if he was <clears throat> pretty immoral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? He wrote Poor Richard's Almanac. He took a scriptural principle and put it in his own words and put life to it over here in a secular uh, magazine, but it was based on the Bible. Of the 89% of U.S. adults who own at least one Bible, 67% own a King James Bible, which marks this 400th, this is at the 400th anniversary uh, this year. According to LifeWay Research, a national-based Christian research agency, well, there, there are two dozen English language Bibles in many contemporary translations, the King James Version reigns even more supreme among those who actually read their Bibles. What about that? People have all those new verses, but do they actually read them? Well, the preachers do. Because they get paid big bucks by the publishing companies to switch Bibles. Because yeah. they, they need millions of dollars for their television productions. Sure they do. Mm -hmm. So if they start using this Bible, they get big bucks from the publisher. Uh, Rain, it rains even more supreme over those who actually read the Bible. 82% of those who read the good book at least once a month rely on the translation that first brought the scripture to the English speaking masses worldwide. King James Bible. Age makes a difference. 76% of Bible holders, 55 and older, have a King James Bible, compared with 56% of those under 35, according to a survey of 1,004 adults conducted March 2nd and 6th. In 2011, it's worse now. Yeah, yeah. But they can't count how many King James Bibles are actually printed and sold because most of the King James Bibles are being printed by independent churches. That's right. Yeah, I agree. Local churches. In India, they have two printing ministries. They're not printing English Bibles. Not in the, not, not in the uh, Karnaka, not in. Malawan, not in Telugu, in English. Mm. Who's reading what? The versions now archaic phrasing and vocabulary don't seem to be a problem of casting ye your pearls before swine, as it says in Matthew 7-6. Right. When Lifeway asked about readers' experience with the language dating back to 1611, many called it beautiful, easy to remember. It is, after all, the book that gave English countless idioms such as salt of the earth, eye for eye, at our wit's end, and only a little faith. Some called it hard to understand, 27%, or outdated, 16%. Well, that's, those percentages have gone up. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, a 
About two in ten of those under age 35 reported trouble understanding it, compared with about three in ten of their elders. Our education system has dumbed us down. Yeah, it's the only problem that the King James Bible faces, the yeah. dumbing down of our yeah. society. Who's reading what? Uh, Christians believe that God's word is truth and that truth is conveyed through language. Thus, translations have always been integral to the spread of Christianity, says Scott McConnell, director of LifeWay Research. That's the guy that did all this, this searching out. It is hard to overstate the influence of the King James Version. Bible readers prefer the King James Version. Uh, this article was written by Kathy Lynn Grossman, USA Today. Even, even the secular newspapers put out great articles at, at the anniversary of the King James Bible, saying how great it was, how great an impact it's made, how beautiful its verses are. Mm -hmm. Over a billion souls on record, over a billion were freely printed. Mm -hmm. How many John and Romans? And with every John and Romans we pass out, we, they have to pay for them, don't they? No, we paid for them. Mm -hmm. right. God's people. The effects of the King James Bible. Beautiful language. It has influenced language. It's what keeps bringing people up out of the gutter. Mm -hmm. Wrong. Right. Yeah. It, it's what helps people stop their cursing and profanity and obscenity. It, it, it says some bold stuff in the Bible, mm -hmm. but it says it in such a way to respect it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So they were naked. Yeah. All right. And I'll sanctify your imagination. Yeah. What do you mean? Sometimes it meant vulnerable to the elements. Right, right. It didn't mean he didn't have any clothes on it. He didn't have an overcoat. He didn't have But the context will tell you. It, it's, it's effects on learning all the major seminaries. In fact, it used to be, I think, until 1950 or about there, to get a law degree, you had to have a theology degree. Mm -hmm. Now they reject anything that has to do with theology. History tells us that when the judges walked in the room to make judgments from the 1500s to the 1700s, when the judge came in, everybody stood up, but the judge was carrying the Bible. That's why they stood up. Because he's going to make his judgment based on Bible principles. That's why they stood up in honor to the Bible. Now judges don't even want you to have the Bible. And they walk in and say, now stand up for me. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See how culture changes? Mm -hmm. Learning, language, law. Blackstone's law book is what this country was established on. His writings were based on John Locke. Right. What a powerful, <clears throat> what a thinker. My goodness. This King James Bible is what our laws are based on. All of those. Why is something right and wrong? Because the Supreme Court says so? Or the Bible says so? What is it? The Bible. We're, it's not a little thing to say the Bible is our final authority. <laughs> right. Hey. Our faith and practice. Yeah. It's what the Bible says. Literature. You can't read American literature until 1960. You can't read anything in the literature of England or any of the English-speaking countries, read their literature. The King James Bible is referred to, quoted, or paraphrased to bring its, because of its truth. How's it affected our lifestyle? Who doesn't want this Bible? People run around naked. People that don't want anybody to tell them what to do. That's old-fashioned stuff. We want to have our tattoos and our nose rings. This Bible and the preachers that preach this through history preach against that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now just think, you can criticize all those old men of God. Maybe they didn't have a Bible verse for everything they preached against. But if, it had, if they hadn't dug their heels in, where do you think our culture would be today? Right. How bad would it be if those old men of God had not taken a stand 
Oh, don't do this, don't do this, don't wear this, don't wear this, don't go here, don't go there, don't listen to this, don't listen to this. Amen. We'd be 50 years on down the road. Right. right. That's true. Lifestyle. Liberty. Where did John Adams get all of his principles for America's liberty? Where did Thomas Jefferson get it? Everybody criticized Thomas Jefferson because he wrote his Bible and he, he erased half of it. He translated the New Testament, but he wrote him a separate New Testament with only practical application. And he didn't reject the other. He just wanted some, the scripture that he could use. And, he, and people say he was a deist. He started three churches in Washington, D.C. He said, these buildings should not be sitting empty. He said, started the second congregational church and the third Christian church. And the center's church. All using the senator buildings, the congress building, the house of representatives. He said, these buildings shouldn't be sitting empty. So he allowed preachers to come. If he was a deist, he was a poor one. Because <laughs> you read those writings between John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, they both died on the same July 4th day, and, and they were they were always in conflict. But when it came down to the Bible, they were in agreement. Where, where the King James Bible is received, so the culture of society grows. Where it is rejected, culture of society goes. You take the King James Bible to some of those countries that you visited, it changes them. In America, we change it, we change the Bible to fit our culture instead of the Bible changing their culture. That's right. So the proper defense of the scriptures. Thus saith the Lord over 430 times in the Old Testament. Don't you want to know what God said? Now where would you look for that? Visions? Dreams? Feelings? I gotta go find out what my preacher thinks. Thank God we have a Bible that... Amen. I have heard, this was, this was my mentor and teacher, he had David Cloud and I, this was our mentor, Dr. Bruce Lackey, head of the Bible mm -hmm. uh, department of Tennessee Temple University. And I've heard what scholars say about the Bible. And I have read what the Bible says about itself. I have chosen to believe the Bible. Amen. It's a faith thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I believe what the Bible says yeah. about Genesis. Yeah. I believe what the Bible says about Jonah's. Yeah. I believe what and Jesus said both yeah. of those things. Yeah. Yeah. So if Jesus believed the Bible and you say you believe in Jesus, then you've got to believe what Jesus says. And Jesus said the Bible is correct. Yeah. And he said what you have in your hand are the holy scriptures. And they didn't have the originals. They had copies of copies of copies of translations of translations of the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nobody had an original. But he said, what you got in your hand is search the scriptures. Right. Where in them you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify me. He said, never mind. Amen. Uh, so that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Yes, the new versions have enough in it that a man can get saved. There's enough truth in there. Sure. Of course. If they testify of him. Mm -hmm. but, if they, but if it comes in a young maiden and not the virgin. Now we got a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but he answered and said, as it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, what if they didn't have it? What if they didn't have anything that agreed with Vaticanus and Sinaiticus and E66? They didn't. But what they had in their hands, Jesus said, was the word of God. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He's giving this to the devil. Mm -hmm. He's preaching to the devil. Uh, then said Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. Now where was it written? Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Acts 15, 15. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. The New Testament agrees with the prophets. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So, the Bible says, to him give all the prophets witness yes, sir. that through his name they shall, be, they shall receive remission of sins. Mm -hmm. So he said, all the prophets said, you got to be, the remission of sins comes through the Messiah, through the Christ, through the Son of Man, Jesus, Daniel chapter 9. Son of Man comes in the clouds. Yeah, right. That's Jesus. Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Who dares call him a liar? Mm -hmm. And yet, verse after verse is taken out of the new virgins. That's right. Who dares call Apostle Matthew a liar? Well, they do. People do. Unbelievers do. But why give them a Bible that agrees with them? John 12, 48. Oh, 5, 18. For really I said, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle shall in any wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Do you believe Jesus? Amen. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words. We don't have his words. What if they're corrupted? What if they're missing? What if the devil stole them? Hmm. The same shall judge him in, that, in the last day. What if they are not preserved? Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return void unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where unto, whereto I sent it. The Bible's got to still be alive. It's not my word, it's not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Where the word of the king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Whose words are, do we say that is? The words of the king. Mm -hmm. right. The king of all the earth. <clears throat> God said, Israel, you already have a king. And he said, Samuel, they've not rejected you, they've rejected me. They want right. a king like the world does. That God has always been the king. Yeah. Yes, that too. Let us use the Bible to defend the Bible. Romans 6, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I don't believe that's the Bible. I don't believe the Bible. Just give them the Bible. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to defend what's just give it to them. Amen. I don't believe it. I've had men stand around me say, I don't believe the Bible, I don't believe the Bible. And I said, so I keep quoting scripture to you, keep quoting scripture. That's the authority, not me. Right. 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 And later, when they're one on one, That's right. you see a tear in their eye. Well, I know what I'm saying out there, but my mom and my grandmama, they've been praying for me. Mm -hmm. That Bible works. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Us. There's no neutrality. Jesus said you're either for me or against me. Right. You're either gathering to me or you're scattering abroad. Mm -hmm. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Make sure who's translating your Bible. Mm -hmm. If their character doesn't match what they're saying, that's why you all practice what you preach. Yeah. Hey, hey. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. How about in the translating of the Bible? Yep. Father, I love you. I pray, God, that you would arouse our holy curiosity. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. If I have said anything wrong, uh, please teach me. But Lord, help us to be taught by the word of God. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen, almighty Lord. Amen.